Hello everybody in the chess world, today I want to show you a game of the Agadmat or you know the most successful chess YouTuber in ever and well he re has recently opened this excellent subscribers channel which is really cool and I've talked about this before but yeah I was checking some of the few available games that he has on the internet not so few maybe some 20-25 that I, I was able to find fine and I found one that, uh, that I kind of like it, uh, mostly the game and the analysis. So I want to show you that. So first of all, uh, Antonio, I mean, the Agatma, sorry, Antonio Radic. So here he was playing black. He was playing this guy, Alexander Barkle, which had uh, 2081 of, of rating, while Antonio had 1913, which is roughly my, my ranking. You know, I'm always also between 1900 and, and 2000. So. So Antonio was black and he played a Sicilian and after no, most normal lighting on, on, on a three, he decided to go for this O'Kelly variation, which, um, well, um, I think is an interesting opening, actually. I agree with him. Um, his opponent played D4, which is, yeah, this, this shouldn't be White's move. It's, it's relatively known that, um, this is kind of falls into Black's idea. Um, I, most like C4, basically our main. Okay, it's not like D4 is, is nothing so, so terrible, but you'll see how now Black will be able to quickly equalize. So C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight on F6 and Knight on C3, and E5. This is the thing, is um, uh, Black is going to be able to play both E5 and D5, <laughs> almost in any opening, even like e either if, if it is a, a Queen's Pawn or a King's Pawn. If Black can play both E5 and D5, well, I, again, they're, they're at least equal. But let us see the game, because after Knight B3 and Bishop on B4, this is the idea where, you know, Antonio is spinning just this Knight, so the Knight has to relinquish control over D5. And of course, yeah, we're hitting. Yeah, knight takes on e4. So after bishop on e3, logical way to protect the pawn. But now not even white's queen is, yeah, on the five. So d5. And look at this position. I mean, who could argue that black is totally fine in here? But let us see how, how the game, game continues because there are a lot of uh, different cool variation and 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 one particular positive and think um, moment in the end, which it, it's not easy. So. He takes d5, was uh, the move by Alexander. Um, Antonio played e4 here. I think um, it's as theoretical as knight takes d5, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, against knight takes d5 and bishop on d2. If I'm not mistaken, the main line is to take here. And, well, b takes e3 is logical, you know. Uh, if we're going to have this ruined pawn chain here. Why not keeping the pair of bishops? What I mean is instead of playing bishop, takes on, on c3 in here. And at least, you know, I think if some players have tried queen on h5 to be aggressive immediately. And, well, black can, I mean, to prevent castles, right? But black can just play knight on c6, protecting the, the a5 five pawn and developing the piece. And let us say castles, bishop on e6. This should be totally equal. Uh, going back, Antonio played e4, which is, more aggressive, uh, more ambitious. And bishop on e2 was the answer. This is forced, right? If bishop on c4, we're just, we're just giving this <laughs> gift in this b5 away. So yeah, better to, to go immediately to e2. And only now knight takes d5 came. You can see there's this big pressure on c3. And well, I mean, who wouldn't prefer black here, right? Still, the engine seems to think that the position is just roughly equal. Um, uh, Barkal play, played queen d4, probably the best move. It it looks better than the, the slightly better than the most logical bishop only two. Where again we we might exchange everything. Okay, again b takes c3, c3 might be the move here. But if we exchange everything and castles again, this is um, total equality. You know, objectively according to the computer, I think black is preferable. Um, but queen d4 was was the tenth move by by white and. Well, just castles, right? The the pin on the c3 knight um, persists, so why not? You know, and and white cannot afford to take on e4 because, yeah, they will just, just <laughs> we we could take on uh, Antonio could have taken on c3 easily there and winning. So again, there is not much more than bishop on d2. White uh, has to uh, solve, you know, this this c3 uh, pin problem, and well, Antonio just went bishop takes on, on c3. 
bishop takes, knight takes, and queen takes. And as we can see, well, now there are not double pawns on, on the c-file, but knight on c6. Um, again, and now black's develop it, development is, is quick. And after castles, bishop on a 5 game. Um, I'm, I'm, it's not so easy, right, to play here. I was looking at this position. I'm not a Sicilian player, but I was thinking like, yeah, it's true, right? I mean, maybe bishop on e6 will be a move that we will consider more easier. But, you know, always knight on c5 is possible. So, yeah, bishop on e5 is much more logical. And you'll see tactically some ideas because, well, the game continues rook fd1 and queen g5. So, well... <laughs> That is, the, the, that is the other thing, instead of exchanging pieces, we have this duo, maybe three with some potential knight coming in here and attacking, why not? Um, maybe, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's an ex exaggeration, but uh, for the first time, um, well, it like, looks menacing, so maybe some sort of <laughs> uh, damage control. Queen g3 was played by, by white, and after, well, the exchange of queens, now we will see again Another good thing about having this bishop in here. Of course, Antonio played the correct e3, and now it's quite obvious that, well, it will be awful to take that pawn, you know. Bishop takes e2, the pawn falls anyway, and then look at this pawn chain. is almost to, to throw up. So uh, c3 was logically the answer, but after e takes and king takes, well... Again, um, computer is still considering the, the position to be equal, but... I much rather this three against two, yeah, on the king side, than this three against two on the queen side for white. So this is a key moment. This this is actually the first moment what I what I'll ask you to pause a video and think because okay, I'm gonna be too precise, too precise for for my strength, you know, for the strength of, of any player who is which is below uh, an international master. But really, what will you play here? I'm gonna give you two options. One is gonna be uh, we're gonna either rook f e8 or rook f d8. So pause the video and think. Well, it's funny. Antonio played rook f d8. Basically, I think most of us will play this move. Um, according to the computer, is is not so precise. But because the thing is, rook f e8 was better, and but he had some ideas that this was really not easy to calculate. Uh, I'm sure Antonio considered th this move, but it's really not, a, as well as maybe rook a d8, that that is another thing that, of course, another move that we might consider. But the thing is, uh, rook f8, knight c5 seems like an unpleasant move, right? This this will be, I think, um, a disencouragement to, to do this rook f8 instead of rook, rook f8. And... Well, uh, we could play rook takes e2 check in here with the idea of king takes and bishop checks. This is possible. Probably not enough. Uh, in here, well, yeah, we can play rook d8 and takes takes and yeah, now the knight protects in here. Uh, what can I say? You could play this with, with black, having the same argument. I prefer this three against two on the king side than the whites on the queen side. It looks pretty dead equal anyway. So um, going back, the thing is the computer was trying not is suggesting rookie five in here. Uh, again, even if you see this move, this is quite complex. So <laughs> I mean, knight takes b7, rook b8, but bishop takes a6, right? I mean, this <laughs> in calculation, this will be like, okay, what are we doing? And what is the computer doing? Well, bishop on c8. Okay, not easy to calculate, and there's a lot of moves to that we might miss. This is risky, but okay, this was the idea and the the correct, the best way to play for black. Uh, rook d6 is recommended by the computer. Uh, by the way, knight d8. If knight d8, uh, well, the engine is just saying exchange here and, and take on b2 check. This is the idea. Uh, the general idea of this rook f8, yeah, was keeping material and targeting this b2 pawn so going back in here after rook d6 which will be correct well computer still was saying exchange do the same Ex exchange everything and play rook takes b2 check and after king on a three yeah to well we can play h5 just to prevent uh back rank mate and yeah black is better here very long line some considerable ramifications i mean quite logical for black not not to see that or not not to decide not to play that as it's too risky rook fd8 um okay but then the thing the other thing is knight c5 came and after rook ab8 
before well for the first time we have to see the we have to say that now white white is better now the position is quite unpleasant for Antonio here so that is was probably the other reason to to play rook f8 instead of rook, rook of the eight okay nothing to be desperate about and yeah Radic play our bishop on c2 Rook takes check, and of course, knight takes e8 is the only move, as, so as to keep protecting the, the b7 pawn. Um, so in here, Alexander Barkov play rook c1. Um, not a bad move, but it, it was preferable to play bishop on f3. So after bishop on f5, rook d1, and now this is a dubious move, because this is going to allow black to neutralize any possible advantage for white. Again, the, the best move was bishop on f3 with consider and, and the idea of then playing rook, rook on d1. This was an advantage for, for white and mostly, well, quite unpleasant on a practical game. I don't think it's such a big advantage, but this is one, one of the problems. So the rook d1 and, and knight on e6, this is the move that Antonio played and, and now things are back to equal, totally equal. So. Here comes another really key uh, moment in the game. Um, and I'm talking about, um, well, them, you know, like both Antonio and, and, and Alexander, what, what, what they were thinking on, on the game. Not necessarily from an objective uh, uh, point of view, but I'm guessing Barkal realized that now the things were equal and maybe he wanted to still try to win the game. Um, there were two, probably two tries to win the game. He, he didn't choose the, the right one. He played knight takes v7. Obviously, just this is a line trying to win the game. The computer thinks that if you want to win the game, knight on d7 should be the, the, the alternative. And yeah, after rook on d8, black is totally fine. And we might not see the point, but bishop on f3 was uh, computer's idea to insist on maybe trying to win the game. You know, if we play b5 now, I don't know, rook d6, maybe one day we can play rook d6. I don't know. Uh, well, one of the ideas is if we play knight g5 or something like that, of course, that will be a blunder because of knight on f6 check followed by rook takes rook. So, yeah, that, that's that's kind of the other idea. After bishop on f3, well, black is I'll, has his hands slightly tied up, slightly. Uh, going back, knight takes b7, although it's a bad move, it, it is uh, it is a try to win the game. So after rook takes, bishop takes on a6 game. Uh, rook b8 played by, by Antonio, but alternative will be rook a7 and bishop c4 to protect the 8 pawn. This was playable. Rook b8 is fine. a3. Uh, I think now Radic played again the best move, king on f8, because if we go rook on a8, Rook D C. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, the idea is I I want to kick kick out the yeah the bishop and then take the the a three pawn. Rook D six is playable. This is a stable square for now for for white and the rook is trying to invade. So I don't know. Um, King on F eight definitely a useful move. Um, and now now is when when Barkle ma made the the clear mistake. Um, this is not an easy position because. Knight takes v7 was a bad move. I mean, black is clearly better for, for the, you know, has been for the last three, four moves. But while bishop on v3 apparently was the best try, and if we pin it, king on e3, I mean, I don't like this. Uh, computer is suggesting this as one of the ways to try and resist with white. To me, it's weird because, I mean, there, there's a really, really complicated and long, um, you know, calculation involved, but maybe we'll be able to, to prove that if we exchange everything, we can win the ending. I don't know. This is definitely a position that will require more than just a few minutes of the engine analyzing things. So, yeah, let's not take this bishop on d3 offer as objectivity. But uh, c4 was a move. I think it's a human move. It's logical. White is, in fact, white is trying to win, just to pressure with the pass pawn. But now Antonio played knight on c7, and for the first time we have... One of the sides with a decisive advantage. Of course, black is totally winning, um, but it's not easy. <laughs> and we'll we'll see how because Barkal play rook on d6. This is the only move. King on e7 and c5. So rook a8, and this is the thing. Now finally, the a3 pawn is falling, but White has some resources because Barkal play played bishop on c4. And after rook takes, b b5 king. I mean, this is scary, right? I mean, just just looking at 
So rook c3, I think this is correct. This is, again, really logical move. Just let us kick out the bishop and then take the c5 pawn and then take the rook. It looks like we're already winning, of course. Rook c6 is a good answer by by Barkal. So uh, there's just I mean King d7 came. Well, I, again we might might think, of, but but isn't White totally lost? Yes, but again it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, a rook d6 check of course came. Uh, right, did not want to repeat the position, and he won King on c8. And b6 came now, uh, which initially when I, when we look at this, we're, we might think, but isn't this obviously insufficient? Well, not so much because Radic took the the bishop, but of course the intermediate rook c6 came. It's not like we're just going to play pawn takes knight and be lost. I, here I think there were a lot of uh, moves for, for black, a lot of interesting moves. It, it's not easy again. The position is still quite complex. Uh, Radic chose bishop on e6, which I think is one of the, yeah, the, the, the main moves. is definitely a good move. Rook takes e7 check. King on b8. c6. And this is the final moment where I'll ask you to pause the thing because here uh, Antonio couldn't find the best move and Unfortunately for for him, that 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 led the the game to a draw while he was winning. It's a hard move to find, and it's 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 hard to realize that this is such a pivotal moment where you have only one winning move. You know, because yeah, I think Antonio. Well, well they both knew that Black was winning all along, like from the last let us say ten moves. So it's hard to to realize that oh this is the, when you have this moment where there's oh, yeah either you play the best move or it'll be beat out to to other so well try to win with black just pause the video and think well you you'll be able to see how it's quite logical not to see the best move here so let's let us first uh, see the the game Antonio played rook before and after rook checks king c8 and rook checks. He went to d8, but after rook on b7, well, Antonio had nothing better than to repeat, and he did, and this was a draw. The thing is, let us say that trying to win, we play h5 now. I'm pretty sure Antonio probably saw this. Well, the problem is, of course, this check, and after king on b7, a kick on e7. Uh, this b7 move is, is it's, it probably, probably what Antonio saw, and I'm sure what Alexander saw as well. So, um, well, first of all, let's be careful. If we play something stupid like that, rook on e8, e8 check is, you know, they're already, really, already making a queen. So, um, well, instead, uh, we can go king d6 instead. So, well, this is interesting. Um, rook c8, exclaim, it's the move. So, I mean, this is... I don't know if they saw this move or not, but it is interesting. And now you, you can just cannot prevent, you know, white from, from making a queen. So, um, I don't know, g6, let this, uh, and here you take, let us say king e3. The, this is probably still a draw, but it looks like, well, maybe white has even some winning chances if black misplaces this. So going back in this moment, the only winning move actually was bishop on c8. This is very hard move to see. It, it even it, it visually looks like a really awful move. Like, what are we doing? Um, yeah, of course, we are preventing the check on b7 by the rook and therefore preventing the draw that happened in the game. But we are dropping this f pawn. This is falling. And we are giving contact after some possible b7. So really, again, it's it's, it's an unnatural move, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. But it was the, the only winning move. And it's, it's funny because... By preventing this check on b7, black is kind of leaving white in Zog Zhuang to any line that it, that it isn't taking on f7. And taking on f7 is objectively winning for black. Again, this must have been something hard to see for both because the thing is, in here you take the pawn and after taking here, of course, if we take on b6, yeah, they take on h5, this is a draw. h5 is a key move because then we'll be able to hold that pawn with the bishop. So let us say rook a6, yeah, rook a6, um, Sorry, rook h7, bishop on g4. And 
yeah, this H pawn will be the winner of, of the game. And uh, well, now the, the B pawn is falling anyway because if pawn, they're just rook. And of course, I mean, we're, we're not going to play <laughs> this ending, uh, will be won by black again. So, really difficult uh, definition again. Best shot on C8. It, it's Again, visually, maybe the, the, the first move that we we will reject, you know. But, okay, it, I think it was an interesting game. Um, you know, talking about the opening, yeah, remember against the O'Kelly. Well, the O'Kelly is, is mainly, uh, a variation is mainly aimed against, yeah, the main line D4. So, either C4 or something else. Try to avoid that with, with white because, yeah, black gets a, a very cool position quite quickly. So, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you like the game. Um, yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> we've seen so many game, games by the Agadmator, but we've seen a few games by him, so it was cool to analyze one. And, well, I'll leave you, uh, Citroneta, with you to ask you to like, comment, share, and subscribe as usual. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you next time.